RMJ Movie Reviews back again. What a happy holidays movie review. Uh, like I said, uh, I kind of skipped over a little bit, but I said, uh, you know, I decided that, you know, I'm kind of always doing things that are kind of hardcore and dark and all that kind of stuff. So I decided to pull it back a little bit and get a little family friendly. I decided to review a classic. For all of us 30-somethings, The Never Ending Story, directed by Wolfgang Peterson from 19, I believe, 84. Is it 84? Yeah, 1984, this movie came out. Boy, oh boy. This, and again, how I always talk about the cover art, take a look at that. Unfortunately, this is a bare bones DVD. I actually picked this up from Walmart in the bargain bin, and I so I so wish they had a special edition of this with interviews with the cast and an extensive two disc edition behind the scenes. Doesn't look like that ever happened, but I, I really wish maybe Shout Factory or something. But this is a Warner Brothers movie; they probably can't get it. But maybe Shout Factory will pick it up, and they only do horror films anyway. But um, the never ending story. Um, of course, guys, we got to do the rewind, my history with the film. I saw the film, uh, I was too young to have seen the film theatrically, but I did see the film. It must have been around the time when it had first come to home video in the 80s. And uh, like every other kid from the 80s, I was blown away by the film. I, I was just blown away by the film. Uh, you know, all the... I was blown away. I loved the movie. I loved it, loved it, loved it. Um, now, re fast forward, I have not seen The Never Ending Story. And now, when I bought this DVD, I bought this DVD like back in 2000, I think, 7 or 8 or something. But I never actually watched it all the way through until now. And uh, because I own The Never Ending Story on VHS, I actually taped it off of a regular TV like back like in the early 90s or late 80s or something like that and I still actually have that copy I was actually gonna watch that version instead of the DVD but then I was like nah I want to see the way the movie was really meant to be shot without the commercials and all that stuff but um I haven't seen the film in many 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 years so I popped it on and once I started watching it um you know, once the cheesy Never Ending Story theme song kicked in, which I love, but we got to acknowledge it's 80s cheese because all those movies have the, the title of the movie and the theme song. You know, I kind of started getting this deep, dark feeling that maybe this is not going to be the movie I remember it to be. Thank God I was wrong. I was totally, totally wrong. Uh, it, it's fantastic. It's, 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 this is a great film. There's, there's some things from our childhood where, like, like for example, Conan the Destroyer. I love the sequel to Conan the Barbarian, Conan the Destroyer. There's a lot of people who hate it. I love it. But that's a film that I blatantly acknowledge is not good, but I love it because it's goofy, dumb fun. Different category with the Never Ending Story. This is a great, epic film. Oh, man. this is And what I love about it, too, is it, it's just... Um, you know, look, I don't need to tell the story of the Never Ending Story. You know, I guess, what the heck, I'll tell it anyway. Basically, the Never Ending Story tells the story of uh, Bastion. He's a kid who's uh, living with his widowed father. He just lost his mother. They don't explain why. And his father is played by Simon and Simon. He's actually one of the brothers from uh, Simon and Simon, a TV show from the 80s. That's the dad. Delta Burke's husband. He was actually in the movie uh, Will Smith just did a couple of years ago about the gambling. I already forgot the name of that movie. But uh, either way, uh, so Bastion is kind of withdrawn and he's having school troubles and he's getting picked on by bullies and stuff who delight in throwing him in garbage cans because that's such a nice thing to do to a child who just lost his mother. <laughs> and, um, you know, he's withdrawn and uh, he goes to the local bookstore and... Uh, Basically, the bookstore guy already knows Bastion's story before he's even met him because he's that wise old man. They hint at that. And uh, he kind of coaxes him into taking this book called The Never-Ending Story. He takes it. He reads about The Never-Ending Story, which basically, inside this book, The Never-Ending Story, there's this, this 
plague of despair called the nothing that's taking over this rich fantasy world and uh, there's only one warrior that can stand tall to stop the nothing and that's a trade played by Noah Hathaway and um, who's clearly not Native American but what the heck it's an 80s movies we roll with it anyway and uh, they have to ch save the uh, the world of Fantasia that has all these cool little creatures uh, some of them I, I looking at it now are maybe a little bit creepy and frightening but the, the creepy factor is kind of only sprinkled throughout the film. And one of the things that I really love about this movie is that children in fantasy films from the 80s had a little bit of edge to them. Because there's some creepy and dark imagery in this movie. Now, it's not as much as something like Gremlins or, or n nowhere near as dark as Legend. Legend, I kind of feel like that's just like not for children. You know what I mean? The movie Legend with Tom Cruise from back in the day, Ridley Scott's film. But um, it, it, there's still, regardless, uh, there's a wolf. I think his name is Gamak. I, I can't remember his name. But there's this this evil wolf, which scared me to death when I was a child when I saw the film. And he's trying to help the nothingness destroy Fantasia. And he's quite creepy. I mean, he looks like the werewolf from Thriller. It's probably the same people that made him. But like his eyes are like green and... They only show snippets of him here and there, but he's very creepy. Um, there's other little creepy, creepy imagery throughout the film. Uh, some of the, the creature stuff is a little bit creepy, but really overall, it's just that wolf that probably would terrify children. But um, it, I love how there is a little bit of danger here. You know what I mean? So it's not all light and fluffy, it, it, but it, it, it has more of the light and fluffy than it does the darkness. But it, it kind of does achieve that nice, balance and i love how it's just like all 80s movies you know what i mean where you you've got um a, a character who's knocked down in the beginning and through a tray you bastion kind of gains back his self-confidence because bastion is reading the story so he's living through a tray you as he's reading the story because he's already withdrawn he withdraws into this book and into this character and as Atreyu is fighting his own battle, because in the story, Atreyu loses his horse, which all of us 30-somethings remember, that scene is gut-wrenching. It was gut-wrenching when I saw it when I was a kid, and it's still gut-wrenching now. Man, when Noah Hathaway starts making that face, and he goes, Artex, please. And, and man, when that cheesy 80s music kicks in, oh my God, and the horse sank into the swamp and then it fades to black and he goes, Artex! Messed me up when I was a kid. Messed me up. And when I watched it again, I got chills watching the scene. I'm traumatized from that scene. It messed me up, man. That is a tough, I will say, the wolf and Artex sinking in the swamp will devastate your children. So if you show it to them, just make sure you keep your arm around them because, I mean, look, Atreyu was crying, Bastion was, was crying. I remember when all of us watched it as kids. And I don't know if it was the after-school program or, or some church function. We were on, all of us kids were crying. Jacked us up, man. But what's great is, is that Bastion lost his mom. Atreyu lost something or something that he loved. So they're going through this battle together. You know what I mean? A trade doesn't know Bastion is there, but it, and that's the cool thing about the movie. You overcome. It's kind of like Rocky-esque in the storytelling. And let's not forget the, the, the really spectacular creature effects. I mean, th this is practical stuff. There's no CGI here. This is 1984, so this is all mechanically operated. Uh, you know, the, the rock climber guy. Uh, the snail. The, the flying bat that kind of reminds me of Graveyard Shift for some reason, which kind of looks like a little bit like a pig. Uh, the practical makeup of, makeup effects and costumes and, and, and set design. And also, too, there's a lot of uh, matte paintings around this time. So, you know, there's clearly scenes where you can tell probably like kind of within my frame, this is me, but probably this here and this here is a painting that they put onto the film. And I actually saw in the uh, special edition of Escape from New York how they put matte paintings in. Very cool stuff. And, you know, on the DVD, 
you know, you can, you can kind of see the difference like in rear screen projection and the matte paintings. And that's why, that's why I kind of wanted to watch the VHS version because the VHS is, is so like blurred. You can't see the difference. So it takes away from it a tad bit, but still that's the fun of movies from this era. It, it's just the, 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 the amount of time and creativity that went into the costumes and the animatronics. And the, the, the giant wolf, or, or not, I'm sorry, not the wolf, the snail. Uh, no, no, he's like a turtle. The turtle who keeps sneezing on a tray you and knocking him into the swamp. I mean, this kid, this kid had to have gone through hell making this movie maker. I'm watching this kid get blown and he's falling down mud mountains. I said, man, they tortured this child. But, you know, he was probably 12 or 13 or maybe he might have been 10, you know, so he probably had a blast, you know. Regardless of the, probably back then in the 80s, they probably made the poor child work a 17-hour day shooting this thing. But um, it, it's just fantastic stuff, the animatronics. And, and I really, I, I love with Gamak, the wolf guy, and how um, when, when him and the you finally have that confrontation, I love how they stick with the villain 10-minute monologue where the guy goes, well, my master plan was I was going to kill you, blah, blah, blah. The wolf dude gets it. And he basically lays out the whole thing to betray you. Like, hey, look, the nothing is taking over this place. It's killing everything. I want to help it. And I just love his, his delivery. And you get to see every little, his eyes get bigger. And that's the thing. The, what's creepy about this wolf is, and what's cool about the uh, animatronics from that time is that his facial expressions are ex as the words accentuate certain parts of the dialogue, his facial expressions go with the dialogue. So the dialogue and the animatronics of the wolf go hand in hand. So it makes sense for what he's saying. So like, Atreyu goes, well, it's me, I am Atreyu. Or no, no, yeah, hey, let me go back a little bit. I think he, he says something to the fact of, I was tr looking for somebody and I was trying to kill him, but I lost him. And then, like, the nothingness starts destroying the, the world more. So, as the nothingness is destroying the world and it's him with a tray, you, you can see the wolf's eyes get bigger. Like, like he's getting amped off this stuff. Like, yeah, the, the nothingness is going to kill you and take over this whole place. And I'm going to have the... And his eyes get bigger and, and his teeth start coming out. It's creepy stuff for children. But... It really accentuates that these two guys are about to have a battle to the death. Now, when I saw this film when I was a kid, I remember Gamak and Atreyu having this big battle. Unfortunately, it's very un if one complaint is that it's very anticlimactic, because really it just it just amounts to he jumps on him and Atreyu stabs him off camera and he's dead. Well, and they do get a little bit of blood on him too. There's blood on his hand and blood on Atreyu. So, and you know, I guess suppose there was probably with the wolf. And the horse dying, you know, they, they probably couldn't have too much more terror in the film. So they probably, that was probably why they had to kill the wolf kind of off screen. And then there's like a weird cut in there that's really all of a sudden. And that kind of bothered me a little bit. But, um, it, it, and I love how, I was thinking this film was going to be two hours. But I keep forgetting, this is an 80s film. A lot of the movies from back in that time were strictly an hour and a half. You know, and this is a brisk 92 minutes. It's a short film. It just, it feels so huge. The scope. And of course, the one thing that I always remember about this movie is, of course, the flying dog. I mean, I I, I love a vortex. Is a vortex, vart, artex. I, I get the horse and the flying dog mixed up. But I always love that flying dog, man. This flying dog is so cute, man. I love his big eyes. He just, he's so cute. I just love that flying dog, man. I always wanted that flying dog when I was a kid, man. And it's fun to see this thing again. And, of course, it's just that, that thing. Of course, I remember the, the cheesy things. Like, Never ending story. I remember all that. But that I think it's the scene where every time a tray you was riding a horse or flying on a dog, I always remember that. Da, na, 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 I heard a theme song, but I've never forgotten that. That theme is just ingrained in my brain, and it just feels so just epic, and it just makes you feel good, man. It, it's absolutely fantastic. This is a great movie. Um, I love this film. 
I love this film. And, and I really found myself, at first it was kind of nostalgia that got me watching it. But I found myself actually getting wrapped up into the movie. I enjoyed myself. I had a wonderful time watching this day. I love this film. It is a solid 10 out of 10. I do believe it is a 